power supplies can get really expensive. They can also be really cheap. Then you get the mid-range, which in my opinion is the best bang for your buck. Now, if you wanna mess around and find out, you can buy the cheapest power supply you can find. And if you're a sensible human being, you'll know that the most expensive power supply with the RGBs and the screens and the whatnots, <laughs> probably also a waste of money. Who's gonna see the RGB anyways? But if you wanna waste your money on something, whatever floats your boat. My honest opinion, the mid-range, where this, the Superflower Lead X3 850 watt power supply lies, that's where the gold is at. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at this power supply, the Superflower Lead X3 850 watt. And as I go through this power supply, I'll explain what's good what's bad and what you should be looking out for when selecting your power supply. Now, just a heads up, I don't know everything about power supplies, I know quite a bit, but it's impossible to know more than cybernetics. That's 20 years of only testing power supplies. It's quite impressive. So after this video, if you need more information, just head over there. I'll leave the link in the description below. Let's get into it. The first thing you should be really concerned about when selecting the right power supply for your PC build is the wattages. This is really important because if you don't have enough wattages, your PC will simply switch off in the middle of your game or your render session or whatnot. So how you calculate how much watts you'll need, you add all the components maximum needs together. But that gets quite complicated, knowing the maximum amount for your graphics card and the maximum amount for your CPU and all of those things overwhelming, right? So I'll leave a link below in the description. You can go there, insert all of the components that you plan on buying and it'll tell you how many watts you'll need. But this little sticker right here is where it gets really important. This sticker signifies how efficient your power supply will be. So an independent company reviews this. This company, Superflower, sends the power supply over to them they test it and they see how much power is wasted. The efficiency of this one, for example, has an 80 plus gold badge. You also get platinums and a bunch of other that indicates how many wattages gets lost. This one only loses 13% of its power. So therefore, if you know you need 700 watts, then an 850 could be enough or maybe play it safe and go a little bit higher. Because like I said, if you go too low, it just switches off mid game. And if it goes too high, nothing really happens. And as you progress throughout your gaming career or your rendering career and you need more wattages, you know that your PC is future-proofed. And that gives you a lot of legroom to work with. Top tip from Stefan here at Beauty Tech. Remember to subscribe. Let's move on to the next thing. Another really important factor when selecting a power supply is the stability of the power it gives you. And this is where a lot of the bullshittery comes in. So I'm going to spread the market wide open for you here. You'll always hear about Japanese capacitors. And the reason Japanese capacitors are mentioned so often is because the Japanese government apparently puts a lot of regulations on the quality and the output and the whatnots of these capacitors. And that makes the power supplies really good or not. So if they mention Japanese capacitors, it should be good, although every single company puts it on their stuff these days. So I don't even know whether it's actually as impactful as it should be. But that's something to keep in mind. And the reason I say it's very important to know the stability of the power output is because when the power fluctuates throughout your system, that's where components get damaged. For example, if you have a power surge, that power goes off and then comes on all of a sudden, you need to know that the peaks where that power goes up and down aren't too high for the components to handle. So for example, this, the Superflower Lead X3, has a built-in regulator to make sure that the power coming in and out can't go too high or too low. That's a really important thing to look at. It's at this point where the quality of your power supply becomes really important because yes, very high and very low could damage the components. However, the stability of those components and the fact that your PC shouldn't be giving you issues comes down to the micro fluctuations, the small little frequencies that go into your components. And good power supplies can modulate those frequencies exactly to what the components need. This is why a cheap power supply is a very expensive buy at the end of the day. We as consumers and even tech reviewers are very dependent on independent companies reviewing these models because it gets really technical. For example, I've only been testing power supplies and PCs for maybe eight or 10 years, where this guy, like Cybernetics, for example, has been doing it for 20 years in a row, and that's all he's been doing. So if you want some more in-depth information about a power supply like this one, you can go over to his website. I'll leave his link in the description below. You can literally download a whole PDF file on everything that is this power supply. It's pretty cool. So the next thing you should actually also care about when looking at a power supply is how noisy is it and how much heat can it actually handle? And that's where a power supply like this one becomes really cool. It has three settings for its fans. 
Setting number one turns on at 62 degrees and turns off at 47. Setting number two switches on at 42 degrees and switches off at 27. And setting number three doesn't switch on at all. I just need to warn you though, do not have this setting on all the time because at some point you will run that power supplies heap way up there. It will cause your PC to lose a lot of its efficiency and when it gets up there your PC will just crash and shut down and you'll lose your project or your gameplay or whatever it is and I just don't want you to have that. Okay, top tip, another one. I've got many of those. The next thing you should be looking at when selecting your power supply is the modularity of it. You get non-modular, semi-modular and fully modular. What this means is on the non-modular ones, all of the cables are already plugged in. It's solid, you cannot move it. Semi-modular, some of the cables are already plugged in and built in and other ones you can add. And fully modular like this, the Superflower Lead X3, you can plug every single cable into it that your heart desires. And this is where the price point starts to differ. The cheaper ones are non-modular, you basically pay for cable management. And what's nice about the Superflower one is the fact that you won't ever need that stupid three plug thing for your graphics card anymore because this has a PCIe 16 pin straight from the power supply. That's a really good and important thing. And also just another small top tip, I have many of those, as you've seen. Buy a UPS, or in my case, I have a whole server box full of inverters and batteries to make sure that the power is stable for all of my electrical equipment. Because electrical equipment do not like fluctuations in frequencies of power. And that's probably the most important takeaway that you can take from this video when it comes to selecting a power supply. You want stability. You want to make sure that the watts they say you're getting is the watts that you'll be needing and that it will come at a stable rate. It's important, buy a proper power supply, don't waste your money on something cheap. Okay, I hope this video helped you. This was Stefan from WeRootTech and please do me a favor, watch another video, help the YouTube algorithm promote me a little bit. This is Stefan from WeRootTech, 93,000 subscribers and hitting that 100K hopefully soon. I want that silver play button. Have a great day, check this video, bye.